I backed Duncan Road's Kickstarter in October 2021, and it was due for delivery in January 2022, which was a bit unrealistic. Kickstarters normally take a lot longer than that. Let's face it, three to four months to deliver seemed like a very short timeline, so it was no surprise when it took a year to come. So what did I get? I went all in, which means I got 60 paints in all, six of them were washes, I'm only one man so I couldn't test every single paint in the range, but I did my best and I did it by painting four different miniatures from different ranges and universes. So let's kick it off with Kingpin from Marvel United. I chose Kingpin because I wanted to paint white and he's got a white jacket. One thing to mention before diving in is that the paints come mostly in threes and they call them triads. So there's a dark tone, a mid tone and a light tone. So it's very easy to pick which one comes after the other one. I actually like that system, so if they expand the range in future, I hope they keep it going. I went for a very simple scheme with Kingpin. I went white jacket, purple trousers and cravat, eh, skin tone on all the skin areas funnily enough, and black shoes. Very very easy. I tackled the jacket first and I used Trooper White, which I assume is meant to be Stormtrooper White, which is quite cool, love Star Wars, and it didn't cover very well. It wasn't two thin coats, it was more like eight thin coats. Eventually it came to a solid colour, but it did take a while. I thinned down some Oblivion Black Wash and ran it into the recesses on the coat. The highlight for this is White Star. And no, I don't mean White Scar, I mean White Star. It's almost exactly the same colour. So I highlighted all over the jacket, all the creases on all the flat areas. It actually highlighted really, really well. I was really happy with how it came out eventually. I used Sorcerer Purple for the trousers and the cravat and it felt really nice to use. I thinned it down a bit and it covered and flowed really, really well. Uh, no problems there at all. I used Runic Purple for the mid-tone highlight and I mixed a bit of Runic Purple and White Star for the top highlight. That worked absolutely fine. I had no problem with mixing these paints. They all went really well. The skin colours I really enjoyed. They were exceptionally smooth. One coat really covered most of it. It was over a white undercoat, so you would expect that. I think over a black one it might be a bit more patchy, but it still covered really nicely. I would say they, they probably covered equally as well, or even a little bit better than Cadian Flesh Tone and Kislev Flesh. I was a bit worried about painting Kingpin's bald head because it's such a flat, smooth area. Uh, sometimes it can be difficult to get the paint looking right on that, but all I did was pull thinned paint from the front of his forehead to the top of his head and from the back of his head to the top of his head and just did that all the way around his head and it looked great when it dried it just looked fantastic, it was really smooth no complaints whatsoever I did that with the Kislev Flesh alternative which was Elven Flesh and I just did it a little bit further up it worked great, I really enjoyed painting this skin which is not something that I can normally say after the Elven Flesh, I used Elven Flesh plus a little bit of white again for the very sharp edges like down the front of his head and across his eyebrows, his nose, uh, cheekbones and I think it came out really nicely. It fits in with the rest of my Marvel United miniatures absolutely perfectly. Apart from the white coverage issue, I had no complaints with these paints. They were great to use. I had a lot of fun painting this miniature. A potential problem with the bottle reared its head here, but I'll talk about that later. It's maybe not a deal breaker, but it is an annoyance. I almost didn't put this next model in. You know sometimes when you're painting you get stuck in the weeds and you just can't find a way to make it look good? That happened on this one. I painted Rocksteady from the TMNT miniature game and I had all sorts of problems. None of the colours really matched up with what I was going for. I wanted like a military green for his hat and I wanted more of a very light yellow for his shirt and neither of them were present in the set so I had to improvise and try to mix them, and I'm not a mixologist, I didn't get it right. I did actually enjoy painting the grey skin, which was the purpose of painting this model in the first place. The dark tone, mid tone and light tone worked really well with that. I put a black wash over it after the dark tone, and then layered it up with the mid tone and the light tone. Uh, I went back and forward a lot, but eventually I got skin that I was fairly happy with, but I could have done better. It was late at night, I was tired, I'm not going to blame the paints here, it was entirely my fault. I think the limitations of the range did come into play here. I know it's early days for it and more paints could be added later on, but the fact that the colours weren't there when I needed them was a bit of a limitation. I'm used to Games Workshop where there's practically any colour you could ever wish for and you just pick it up, use it, stick it back, done. 
I'm not used to trying to mix three different colours of paint just to get the shade that I want. So the main takeaways from this are that I would definitely paint with the greys again, but I shouldn't paint late at night, because when I do, it looks like I've painted it with my elbow. I'll probably go back with GW paints and tidy up Rocksteady a bit, maybe when I'm feeling a bit fresher. Next up was the Kasargi Night Guard from Cursed City. I've wanted to do a tutorial on this model ever since I did my Ulfin watch back months and months and months ago, but I've never got around to it, so this was the perfect opportunity. I wanted to try out all the reds in this uh, range, because I really like painting with red. So I base coated this one with Berserker Red, which was practically corn red, and the conversion leaflet it says it's Word Bearers Red, which I've never used, but for corn red it would be absolutely perfect. It covered so well, and if I'm honest I might actually like the way it went down better than corn red. I'm not too sure on that yet, it might just be because it was a new bottle and it was flowing really nicely, but I really enjoyed using it. It was really smooth and it gave a really rich deep colour, it was very impressive. There are tons of tan paints in the range, some might say too many, so picking a colour for the fur was no problem at all. I used Dragon Fang, washed it with the Battle Mud wash, which is Agrax Earth shade, and then I dry brushed with Skeleton Legion and then Vampire Fang. I think at this point the system was definitely showing its value, especially for a simple painter like me. The silver's got a run out here with Surcoat Silver, and I can't say it's any different to Lead Belcher or any of the GW range. It still clumps up a lot, you need to get the mix of water and paint right, otherwise it's either too thin or too clumpy, so it's just exactly the same. When you do get the mix right, it flows nicely, it covers really well, and I'm not displeased with it, it's just no different to Games Workshop. The limited range reared its head again here, I was looking for a nice olive skin tone, there wasn't one in the range, so I decided to improvise and I used the Orc Flesh Wash, and that worked really well, that was one coat, I didn't do anything else to the skin, and I think it looks okay. These guys are rank and file, well, there's two of them in Cursed City, but I would paint them both at the same time, so it would be kind of like a batch paint, so I'm not too fussed how the skin came out. I used Glistening Gums for the uh, gums, I felt obligated to just because it had a cool name, and that worked really well, I really liked that colour, I'll be using that for the inside of a lot of mouths going forward, as weird as that sounds. Uh, I painted the teeth in in white after that. I didn't really bother about not getting glistening gums all over the teeth. I just painted them pink and then painted them white. I put the battle mud wash on top and then picked out the tops of the teeth in white again. That worked really well, it was really quick and I'm happy with it. For washes I decided not to wash the cloth because there were already nice dark recesses. I used brown on the fur and black and brown on the metal, applied separately. Uh, just to get a really nice old worn look across all the metal. I also wanted to try a bit of rust. There is a paint called Rust Orange, but I thought it might be a bit dark for what I was trying to go for. I was trying to go for really bright orange rust, so I used the next one in the triad, which was Fanatic Orange, and I think that worked really well. I thinned it as much as I could, and then just applied it to all the bits that required rust, and I really liked that effect. For highlighting the red I didn't stick rigidly to the triad, and that was probably more from my experience with Games Workshop paints. I know that you don't go Corn Red, Mephiston Red, and then Evil Sun Scarlet. So instead I got the Berserker Red, skipped the Sanguine Scarlet, which was the mid-tone, and mixed it up with some Demon Red, which is the light tone, and just applied that instead. After that I applied pure Demon Red for the edge highlights. I just felt that Sanguine Scarlet would have changed the tone of the red too much, so I skipped that entirely. I have no problem with any of the reds in this range, I love them all, and they'll all make their way into my toolkit. The last model I chose was a Blood Angel, because yet again I wanted to test out the reds, this time Sanguine Scarlet. I wanted to see if it would be a good alternative to Mephiston Red, possibly my favourite Citadel colour of all time. It took two thin coats to get a solid coat on top of a black undercoat, but that red came out fantastic. It's exactly the colour I wanted for my Blood Angels, and I think it will fit in with my old models as well. There's something I hate painting on Space Marines, and this might sound a bit weird, but it's all the leathery straps and pouches and things like that. So I was really pleasantly surprised to find that the browns in this range are great. I painted all the holsters, pouches and straps with cuirass leather, and then boarhide and fur cloak. It made it really easy to get a nice leathery brown, and it is a method that I'll be using in the future. I really wanted to use Dragon's Gold, so I was a bit disappointed when I'd given it a quick shake and then it came out as a watery mess. What it turned out to be was entirely my fault. After a good shake, and I'm talking about a good few minutes, 
Don't worry, I've been practicing for this for a long, long time. It came out perfectly. It covered so well, and it might actually be my go-to gold from now on. Retributor armor might have had its day. Yes, I actually like it that much. It's bright, it flowed smoothly, and it was just a joy to use. Metallics aren't normally my favorite thing to use, but this was great. I felt the same about glistening gold. I've had so many problems with Liberator gold, especially if you've left it lying for a little bit. It's difficult to remix it and get a good flow on it. So if glistening gold holds up over time, I'll be delighted to move away from it. It really does feel that this entire range was made just to paint Blood Angels. All the colours you need for Blood Angels come out absolutely brilliantly. It isn't all good though, as you would expect there are some negatives as well. The bottles are a serious cause for concern. After you give them a good shaking, you could even stand it upright and a little bead of paint would plop out the top and start oozing down the side of the bottle. So that could be a problem. It's wasted paint and it glugs up the top of your bottles. It's not the biggest issue, but it feels like a design flaw to me and something that could require wiping after each use if you don't want it to clog up. The paint also seemed to separate really quickly on my wet palette, even if I only left it for half an hour to an hour. That doesn't happen with my GW paints. So even between sessions, my paint became unusable, so I had to use more. The black and brown washes seem a wee bit muddy compared to Games Workshop washes. I don't know if it's fair to compare because they're completely different ranges, but I didn't enjoy using them as much as I do Games Workshop. There was something in the middle of the Kickstarter where they said they had to add deodorant to the washes because they stank, so I don't know if that's affected the chemical makeup of them or whatever. I'm not a scientist, so I don't know, but I didn't enjoy using them as much. The whole range, if you look at the paints as a whole, seems pretty dull and muted. That'll be great for some things, like say Cruel Boys or something like that. Not so great for other things. I know it's early days, but additions are required to flesh out the paint range a bit. The things I'd like to see almost immediately are a turquoise and an olive green. Other than that, a few different shades of red. I know there are a lot already, but I think we could always use more. And I think that would be well on its way to becoming a more complete range. They also need to follow up the Kickstarter with retail sales of these very, very soon. There is no point in getting attached to these paints if you're stuck with one bottle for months and months and months. I hope they start selling them in retail before the Kickstarter's fulfilled. I know that's very selfish of me to say and it's not fair on the people who haven't received their Kickstarters yet, but it's paint, it runs out. Uh, I know my reds are going to run out quickly, my metallics will run out quickly, so I really want a way to be able to restock them. Otherwise, I'll just go back to Games Workshop and I'll never look at these again. There's already a hint of technical paints in the range, with Vampire Thirst being Blood Effects and Spirit Medium being the Lamian Medium substitute, so I'm hoping that expands as well. Everyone seems to be jumping on the contrast bandwagon these days too, so hopefully that's something that can be done as well. It must be really tricky to come up with 60 unique names for these paints, it's not something I'd like to do, but as you can imagine these ones are a bit of a mixed bag. We've got cool names like Trooper White and Cold Corpse Blue, but then we've got complete rip-offs like White Star and Death Reaper. There's also some oddities with the triads. You've got Dragon Fang as a dark tone, Vampire Fang as a light tone, so in the middle we've got Skeleton Legion. I don't know why they didn't just continue the Fang uh, naming convention, but they didn't, and that happens quite a lot throughout the range. I think it would have been better just to have three Fangs in a row. It'd be a lot easier just to grab them. The worst named one has to be Spirit Medium. I thought it might be Methylated Spirits from the way it was named, but no, it's just a fancy name. It is just Lamian Medium. I even gave it a sniff to double check. Not a good name. Now, these are all really minor complaints. All in all, I really enjoyed using this range. I didn't manage to get to use all paints, maybe there's some that aren't so good that I didn't get to, but for the miniatures I painted, I had no real problems other than the coverage of the white. They also added a nice conversion chart and they do match up one to one with Games Workshop paints, which is great. I'm going to explore this range further and I will report back my findings. The Kosargi Nightguard and the Blood Angel will be getting their own tutorials to be released sometime in the future, so look out for them. If you want to see more from me, I'd recommend this one. Cheers.